In this video, I'm going to show you five kettlebell exercises for men over 50. There's a few challenges going on once we guys cross that age. So let's accommodate for these challenges and the exercises may actually surprise you. Good time, Gregory Philippe Stark here. This topic was requested in one of our recent YouTube comments. So if you have any suggestions, any ideas for videos or kettlebell content, let us know right now in the comments. Kettlebell exercise number one is the kettlebell press. The press serves as a great exercise for shoulder and chest development and for the upper body in general. There's two variations that you can do with the press. Number one is the double handed press. You choose both hands to grab the kettlebell. You swing the kettlebell up or you grab it from the bottom if you want to. What I do is if I want to grab it from the bottom, if you're not used to the swinging portion, then you grab the one hand with the handle and the other hand you tuck your thumb into the kettlebell window and the fingers rest on the bell. Now you want to do a deadlift or a clean so to speak. So you want to have a straight back, you tense your abs and you bring the kettlebell up and then you switch with the other hand as well. So both thumbs are inside the kettlebell window and fingers are on the bell. So elbows are in, abdominals are tight and now you press it overhead. You breathe out once you're on top. You breathe out when you go down into the right rest position. Make sure that when the kettlebell is in the overhead top fixation, that the elbows are locked, that you don't lean forward, but you do a double chin. And then when you come down, you come close to your body, okay? And your upper body leans back a little. Don't go too far out, stay tight. Variation number two is the advanced version. You gotta grab the kettlebell and bring it up into a clean position. So backswing, clean it up, hand insertion, boom. That's a little bit tricky to learn. If that's too hard for you, then you grab the kettlebell, you want to go down into a so-called hook grip. Make sure you have a straight back. You grab the kettlebell below the bell, you lift it up, and then you rack, rest it. Then once you're ready, you tuck your elbow into your body so that your lats start engaging. And then, tensing abs. Over at top fixation, it's the same thing. Elbows extended, and then you come down once again. Tense abs, elbows tucked into the body, lats engaged. So what we do when we go into the press is we want to find the shortest distance between point A and point B. And the shortest distance is a straight line. Make sure when you're in the over top fixation, arm is connected to your head. So don't lean with your head towards your arm. Make sure you pull your arm towards your head. Another thing that may happen is the law of individual differences. If your arm is a little bit up in front because your shoulder doesn't allow this or it's just the natural way for you to be a little bit more in front, it's totally fine. Just make sure it's not too much out there or else it will cause additional torque for your shoulder which is unnecessary. When it comes to pressing, you want to start with light weights first because the shoulder is a very delicate joint. And even though it's an expression of upper body strength, if your shoulder is the limiting factor, you always have to be careful. So you want to start with an eight kilo or a 12 kilo and then slowly move it up from there. Exercise number two is the kettlebell deadlift. And just like the press, it's one of the most fundamental exercises that you can do with kettlebells. With the deadlift, we work the posterior chain of your legs as well as your back. But we could also classify it as a full body exercise just like the press because when you work with free weights or with kettlebells, if you go heavy or you do many reps, then your whole body will feel it. Now there's two variations that you can do. The first variation is the double-handed version, which is the easiest. Now it's very important that you learn a correct hinge because the deadlift is a hinge movement. So with the deadlift, we stand shoulder width apart over the kettlebell and we want to make sure that it's over the middle of my foot so to speak it's not behind me the kettlebell is not in front of me i make sure i stand right above the kettlebell so when i look down the handles right in the middle of my foot so now here comes the hinge what i have to do is push my hips back push my abdominals down push my chest up bring my shoulders back and bring my neck 
in a little bit of a so-called double chin. Now what I have is a firmly locked spine. And as you can see, my knees, they don't do a lot of bending. I want to make sure that it's everything in the hips. Now I'm feeling tension in my posterior chain on my legs. Now, in order to reach the kettlebell, I have to bend my knees a little bit and bring my upper body a little bit down. So now I can grab it. As you can see, my back is now in the 45 degree angle. So I grab the kettlebell. Now, when it's lighter weight, I grab it in a so-called finger grip with both hands. I don't do a crush grip. I do a finger grip. So now pulling my shoulders back. Now, extending. Now I'm upright and bringing it back down. Extending my hips and bringing my whole body in the upright position. And bringing it down. As you can see, I breathe out when I'm on top. Breathe out when I drop the kettlebell. Now there's a different kind of breathing technique that you can apply when you work with very heavy weights that is the so-called Valsalva maneuver. What I do is I breathe in, tight abdominals, and I breathe out when the kettlebell drops. That way I can add some more stability and safety to my spine. Now a little bit of an advanced version would be the hand-to-hand -hand deadlift. So what that does is more a unilateral move. So when I go down, I have to make sure that once I use only one arm, that I don't let my body go into that side bend or that side rotation so that my spine starts rotating. I wanna make sure my abdominals are engaged. I pull my shoulders back. Now, since this is a leg exercise, you can use heavier weights if you have a bigger array of kettlebells. You can maybe start with a 20 kilo or even 24 if you're a little bit stronger. Yet, what you can also do is use lighter weights and just do more reps if you just have one kettlebell only. I wouldn't dismiss the deadlift just because you have a lighter weight to work with because the hinging motion is such a great exercise to learn that sometimes even with lighter weights, we can get a good stimulus Plus, we can get used to understanding what the hinge is supposed to feel like. Now, exercise number three is the kettlebell floor press. You can use it as a standalone exercise in this array of exercises, press, deadlift, and floor press, or you can use it as a substitute for the first exercise, the press. The reason for this being that you can use it as a substitute exercise is some people have trouble with the shoulder. They have a frozen shoulder or they have maybe a tricky position of the upper body so it's hard for them to press weights or just even lift their arms so that way you can have a great pushing exercise without going too hard on your shoulder. Again, we have two variations. The first one is to press with two hands. Now what I wanna do is the same grip as we've used in the press. Grabbing the kettlebell and then rolling with the bell on my back. My feet are firmly planted on the ground, my knees are flexed, and now I press the kettlebell up, breathing out on top, and breathing out once I reach the bottom, back up. Make sure your elbow's fully extended. And what you can do for additional stimulus is try to crush the kettlebell. So you wanna really press it together, but still make sure that you have enough grip. Ooh, that's a tough one. Once you bring the kettlebell down to your bottom, I would rest it on your body and then slowly bring it down. The reason why is you don't wanna pull the kettlebell up like this or you don't wanna hurt yourself once you put the weight down because you maybe put your shoulder in a very tricky position, so always be careful. Now variation number two is single-handed. So what I do is I grab the kettlebell in the so-called hook grip. Now I pull the kettlebell close to my body. I can do the same thing. I'm on my back, feet firmly planted on the ground. Now what I do is the elbow has connection with the floor. I try to grab the kettlebell and then finger the kettlebell up and down. Back up, and down, back up, and down. And what I would do, I can show you too like this, is when you press the kettlebell to the top, you pull it in so that we get a great stimulus for the chest.
that's a great chest smoker, let me tell you. And when you put the kettlebell back to the floor, boom, and you're safe. The same thing, we always wanna make sure that we are very careful when it comes to shoulder health. Exercise number four is the dead stop swing in the heart style fashion. If you wanna tap into your explosive strength reserves, then this exercise fits greatly. Now, I would recommend you to start with two hands. And since it's an explosive exercise, you might as well start with heavier weights, but it's the same mantra again. If you only have one kettlebell, just start with the lightest weight or with the weight you have and then work from there. Now, what does dead stop swing even mean? What we do is we start with the explosive element of the swing bring it into the back swing portion of the lift then we boom fully extend it the kettlebell's flying and then it comes back and then we put the kettlebell down it's a great way to understand the explosive nature of the heart style swing the kettlebell and my feet form a triangle i make sure i have enough space between me and the kettlebell so once i grab it I have a competition kettlebell, so I grab it a little bit more firmly than with the deadlift and I make sure I pull the kettlebell towards me. I start engaging my lats, pulling my shoulder blades towards my hips and my hip is pushed back. I can really feel the posterior chain of my leg muscles. Now I'm ready. I pull the kettlebell in, send it flying and drop it. Once again. Now that's a 16 kilo and I'm getting used to the heavier weight. So that's why it's almost boom, flying away, taking off in and all by itself. But what you want to understand is you want to have this pow, this explosive movement where you have a lot of force coming from your posterior chain. Now your anterior chain serves as a break. So your abdominals are tight, the quads are on fire, arms are extended, lats are tight, and then it comes down you put the bell down and I had to work on my neck I used to do this and now I understand okay double chin pulling my neck back back standing up firmly and that's the dead stop swing exercise number five is the split squat the split squat allows you to build strength in your quads and in your legs so you can do those daily activities without any problems or pain such as running walking walking up the stairs, carrying your groceries. You need some strong legs in order to do these daily activities easily and without any pain. The reason why I would recommend a split squat first is most men are tight in their hips. And if I would teach you a goblet squat, which is a great exercise, you would have to learn to really be able to open up those hips first, upper body stand straight, and then come back up. And most men have problems with that exercise because we're so tight in the hips. So now a split squat allows you to work and build strength in your legs and build muscle without having to be as flexible and as mobile as it is needed when you do a goblet squat. Now don't misunderstand me, I believe mobility and flexibility is necessary, yet when you want to get started, you maybe want to use an exercise that suits your needs first. The split squat is also a great unilateral exercise, so you have to understand that you want to work both sides. I bring the kettlebell up, and now I have it in the so-called goblet grip. So what I do is my chest is up, I go into a reverse lunge, and now my leg behind me, I set it down. Boom, my upper body stands straight. I have 90 degree angles in my knees and my hips. I come back up, I go back down. Come back up, going back down. If you're just starting out, you maybe wanna try the exercise without any weight and then slowly and gradually adding weight to the exercise once you get stronger and once you understand the exercise a little bit better. As a bonus, let me give you some quick mobility exercises so you can loosen up those joints a little bit and get those synovial fluids going. Now, most guys, when they get a little bit older, just most people in general, walk around like this. So let us correct this posture. The first thing that we want to work on is our neck. Now, most of us, we walk around like this. So what we want to do is we want to stand upright and then we want to do double chin, pulling your neck in and then extend it. Boom. 
Pull it in. Extend it. Pull it in. Extend it. And if you do it right, when you pull it in, you should feel a nice tension really here in your upper back. Then extend it again and pull it in. It's a great exercise for your neck. The second thing that I would do is just move it up and down, side to side, up and down, side to side. If we move down the ladder, we want to go into the shoulder. We want to make it very easy. You just start rotating and then you're switching sides. And then you do level two, you straighten your arms, make sure biceps connects with your ear, thumbs point back, and then you open up. And then the other side. Now let's work with the T-spine. Most folks have trouble with the T-spine. That's that area right here. That's a little bit advanced, but try to follow me. What we do is we lay on our back, you have your arms extended and your palms are facing the ceiling. Now what I do is I lift my left leg, I bring my left foot to, the, to my right hand. Now what I do is I point my neck to the left side. And now I breathe in heavily four times and breathe out. Inhale, exhale. You have four times and then you're switching sides. And that will open up your T-spine to really get some mobility up here and that will maybe help you to start moving or start exercising with the press in and all by itself because nobody's able to press anything if we walk around like this. So we have to get that upright posture first. Now the final area that I will work on is your hips and we can work your hips very easily. Just make sure you stand shoulder width apart, keep your hands on your hips, and then you start rotating. And when you start rotating, you want to really exaggerate. That means once the hip is in front, my upper body leans back. Once the hip is back, my upper body leans forward. And I want to make sure that I keep my knees straight so I can really feel how those muscles that are attached to my hips are moving, getting some mobility, and maybe they are releasing. A little bit and as a final a bonus of the bonus you can work your spine a little bit make sure you bend it first and then you reach to the top then you overextend and you come down again and do the same thing again with those little mobility drills you can really really improve your posture in no time. So thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Consider subscribing if you're new to this channel. If you're looking for a serious, systematic kettlebell program that takes you from a beginner to an advanced level in about three months, and you want to combine it with some easy to follow nutrition coaching, then check out 90 Days of Kettlebells. You'll find the link in the description. 14 day free trial included.